So thank you for coming today on the Privacy Talks on Zero Death. Um, I'm very glad to、uh, talk with you about the privacy issues in the global market. So you are the professional in this space, the privacy law in the United States. I'm very glad to have you the call like this in this situation, this room, right? This is very amazing.、Um, So、uh, let, let's move on the interviews. So the 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 please、uh, introduce yourself、uh, to the listeners. Thank you for having me.、Uh, by the way, Kohei, I, I appreciate you reaching out.、Um, like you said, I'm I'm Lourdes Tureksha. I am the CEO and founder of PIX, which is a privacy consulting firm in Silicon Valley. I am a lawyer by training. I have worked with tech companies,、uh, particularly in the cybersecurity field, in the last few years on on how to、uh, use privacy as a competitive advantage and design privacy into cybersecurity products. I've also worked with more than a hundred other tech companies and startups and global companies on their privacy obligations prior to that. Yeah, thank you for the introduction. That that's very amazing. Uh, so you you said that you can, you working out with your companies. That's a, a lot of the the, the companies, the startups, the the big companies are also very interested in the、uh, the privacy space. Since the in California has started the new new laws. So what what what's the、uh, most of the demands from their side to protect the privacy law? Well, there is quite an uptick in demand given the recent California Consumer Privacy Act or the CCPA. Uh, it's not quite the European GDPR that we have, but it, it's it's a step towards it. It has some of its flaws, which is why a lot of privacy professionals have put have voiced their concerns and provided feedback to the legislator to update it. And so, while the law itself is final, there are some proposed regulations that the California Attorney General is still working on, and that everyone,、uh, privacy. Practitioners are looking into、um, that has created quite the urgency for for not just for tech companies but other、uh, regulated companies in California to、uh, look into their privacy practices if they haven't already. Many many of the companies have looked into it because of GDPR, but but、mm-hmm. those that weren't covered by GDPR certainly are looking into it now. I see. Yeah, that, that that's very interesting. I, I'm just checking a lot of the startups is trying to become a、uh, protectable technology, such as the the COVID-19 apps is been started from the privacy、uh, protections. They they try to spread their own、um, properties through that. that. That's that's very interesting topics.、Uh, so I, I want to move to the next question. Is your past experiences in?、Uh, Power out networks. I saw that the videos, the, the interviews, that was very amazing.、Um, the, my, my question is just uh, uh, like in uh, the privacy by design concept,、um, we have we have to be、uh, like the existence, the security, the privacy together. So from a sense, the, what, what's the difference is the privacy and security、uh, the, the, for the companies、uh, to, to prepare for the business. Sure, absolutely. So,、uh, privacy and security certainly go hand in hand, but they're not the same. This is a great question. It's one of the things that even privacy or、uh, certainly cybersecurity professionals don't、uh, may not understand very well.、Uh, I've, I've spoken to both types of professionals, so some of the, you know, not everyone, not all privacy professionals、mm-hmm. have social security experience, and vice versa.、Mm-hmm. And so, the way I look at it is that privacy is really about You know, a specific type of data, and that's personal data.、Mm-hmm. And, and whereas security is involved with not just personal data, but also、uh, trade secrets, intellectual property, or any data that is valuable to an organization. And so that's one type of distinction from the data level. There's also the the expanse of it, the 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 inquiries that you would ask for privacy. It's not just about securing it. Secu- securing personal data is in, an important part of privacy, but、mm-hmm. it's it's not just about that. It's also about 
collecting, how you collect the data, how you use the data, how you give consumers and, and the data subjects uh, access to it and um, control over their data, how long you, you retain that data, um, and so forth. And so in that regard, privacy is a little bit broader Whereas, uh, because it's in, it, it's um, concerned with not just securing the data, but making sure that the way you collect and use and 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 how long you store it are all legitimate. Um, whereas security might might be broader for the types of data, but mm -hmm. all it's all it's concerned about is securing the data, uh, mm -hmm. even though the, the data types might be broader. Um, and so that was that is an interesting thing to have to explain to many cybersecurity and privacy profes professionals, even even though they're you know experts in their own domains. It's it's always good to understand both sides. I've had I've certainly had to do that when I started out earlier in my career as a privacy professional. I worked with the CISOs organization. Mm -hmm. um, at a Fortune 300 company, and so I've, I've put it upon myself to understand the cybersecurity and information security domains, um, and and that's 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 some of the ways I try to explain it to others when I have to. Um, at Paul Two Networks, it, it was it was good because privacy by design and and the privacy initiative really was something mm -hmm. that our board, our our leadership and our board were were concerned about, mm -hmm. and. So it was very easy and not to have to sell, you know, what we're trying to accomplish there, which is, which is a big difference from you know, the many clients that I had when I was at a big law firm and, 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 you know, oftentimes before with, with, with my prior clients, we had to go to their board directors and convince them to fund the privacy program. Um, at Palo Alto Networks, it was nice that, the, the, you know, the board of directors, it was the other way around. They wanted to be up to date as to what we're doing in terms of the privacy program and GDPR. Um, the way that we bake privacy into, into, uh, into the products was mm -hmm. by making sure that the, 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 we created a privacy decision framework for that, that our engineers and product teams would follow when they're developing new features and new products. Um, and and we all had privacy champions and and um, including in the product teams and we mm -hmm. worked closely with the product teams to make sure that how much data we collect, what we do with that data, how how long we store that data, all those things that we talked about earlier uh, when you're concerned about privacy and how we give access to that data to our customers and their and their employees or data mm -hmm. subjects. Um, that those were things that we provided. Uh, for them, mm -hmm. yeah, and that that's that's very interesting experiences in uh, this space. It's in the very realities uh, for for the just the startup of this space. So let, let, let's move to the more regulatory questions for this. So the, since the CCPA in California has been started, it's almost uh, five months so far. A lot of the company has been a specific inspections such as in the Salesforce and Zoom has been a like it's in a controversial this moment. So what 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 is the most challenging for the tech company in California to be a prevent in, in this law? So this is the very um big change um for all the tech companies to gather a lot of the data. I think the biggest problem is probably how uh, how to interpret the this, the definition of sale. So the CCPA has one um, prohibition or some restrictions against the sale of data. So if you're selling data, then as a company, you have to, you have a whole bunch of obligations under the CCPA that you need to comply with. And so a lot of companies are not really aligned. It, it's interesting because uh, if, you, if I contrast it to the GDPR, um, there, there are some, areas in the GDPR that are, that are still not clear, of course, but I've never seen anything this vague uh, with the CCPA. And, and that's, that's really, you know, and, and I've never seen many companies take different interpretations and privacy professionals take different interpretations of what a sale of data looks like. Um, and and it's, it, it's really because of the drafting of it. It, it was drafted very broadly uh, to include you know any any transfer 
or sharing of data for for not just money, but also for any valuable consideration. So, so valuable consideration under California law is very broad. And so that's probably one of the areas that the, the well, it is one of the areas that tech companies are struggling. Mm -hmm. with. We've, we've seen tech companies and, and, and other tech, other companies, not just tech companies, we've seen them struggle with, with their strategy. Some of them saying we don't, we don't sell personal data, but mm -hmm. here we'll we'll go ahead and provide the requirements. The re, you know comply with the requirements. Some of them say uh, we don't understand the definition of the data of, of sale of personal data, and and it's interest. So, so it, it's interesting. Uh, uh, I'm I'm hoping that the attorney general will or the legislator at some point in the future will clarify what that means. Um, that's probably the biggest the biggest challenge for them is complying with the with the sale restrictions uh there there are others but they were clarified last mm -hmm. year when, when the ccpa was updated i see yeah I, I think it's just started that a lot of the companies are trying to align in the processes but still not they completed the, the many things still also the regulator is just yeah. struggling yeah. there is no alignment yeah. for the sale for for the sale restriction mm. at this point, based on what I've seen. Mm. Interesting. So, in that sense, is the the, the like the online conference Zoom has been uh, like um, in the controversial now as well as in Japan. A lot of the people is um, like they becoming to use the online conference since the coronavirus. It's been a, a strict requirement to stay at the home, do the work, the remote. In that sense, Zoom has been a very good advantage to utilities. But the problem is they are indicated in the privacy issues. It's in, uh, like, I guess, in the middle of the March, since a lot of the issues that are coming up, the securities, uh, password, or the Zoom bomb, the many things. So um, the, the, what, what is a critical issue in the Zoom regarding the privacy um, protections? And also how the California people is thinking about the Zoom or any alternative is going to become popular. Right. So y you've probably seen all the comments that the privacy professionals have made online mm -hmm. on LinkedIn and Twitter. And, and there are, you know, serious concerns, privacy concerns that were raised. But if I were to pick one, I think it's, it was their inability to design their products or engineer their products with privacy in mind. So, so uh, I think I believe their CEO had come out to say that you know they just never thought about privacy, and that's one of the important um, requirements of the GDPR. For instance, is privacy by design, and one of one of the uh, tenets of privacy is privacy engineering. You know, so you don't tack on privacy features and, and privacy controls last minute you have to think about it from from the very beginning and so i think the biggest challenge there was their was their uh failure to build and engineer and design products with privacy in mind from the very beginning and that's that's resulted to a lot of the privacy complaints that we've seen um online from from and and in the news i see so the the, the, the people is becoming a worry about the the, the trust of the doom now the lot of the alternatives are coming, like the Microsoft, the Facebook, the Google is try to put their services online conference. So, so we we have seen people being concerned, and governments in particular are mm -hmm. banning Zoom. Um, that said, we do see Zoom responding in a way where they they they've indicated that they want to fix things so um you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm waiting and seeing where that goes i've seen them uh put together a security council uh, of security experts and i think they just added a privacy expert to it a few days ago i'm hoping that they add more uh privacy people into that council mm -hmm. but in addition to that they really do need internal not just an external council but they also need internal uh, an internal group that's going to own their privacy uh, program that's mm -hmm. the, that's going to think about their privacy strategy and and when I say privacy strategy I'm not just talking about uh, compliance compliance is a baseline I think that's mm -hmm. that should be a given I'm, I'm talking about using uh, 
privacy as a, a as a thinking of privacy as a as as a business matter because there there is a very good case business case for privacy. So there's a ton of research out there on the return on investment of privacy. Cisco and and Ernst and Young have come out with with those research uh, looking into how uh, the more mature, the more work you've done in privacy, the more the the more sales you close, especially in the B two B context, and so uh, you know, we've seen companies like Apple, the big companies like Microsoft, use privacy as a competitive advantage, um, and and so in today's age where there's been a backlash against tech, privacy is becoming more and more important. It's not, it's not just a compliance function, so it becomes more important for them to have. An, intern, an internal team, not just an external security council or privacy council to address their privacy and security issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand. You know, we, we, we are moving to the, our business communication online. So a lot of the data has been on the cloud in the sense that a lot of the company needs to be uh, facing the privacy issues. Um, like this software service model is needs to change uh, their previous approach. So that, that's a very big shift. So that, that's a very great opinion. Um, so let's let's move on to the next question. It's just in the big pictures. Uh, so you you just wrote about on the medium the the U.S. Uh, probably have the uh, federal based data protection rule. Um, so how, how do you envision of this, uh, the, like the, the government actions, like right? FTC uh, might be set the specific law or uh, li like now a lot of the states in a different rule. So which, which type of the direction you have in America? Well, things have changed quite a bit given the pandemic. And so the legislators have really been focusing on, on that. So I, you know, my response is going to be based on what I saw before the current pandemic. And so we've had several federal privacy bills uh, introduced that were not finalized. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it, we just, I, I, don't, I don't see ha it happening anytime soon. M maybe perhaps after we get through this pandemic, they, the, you know, we can pick up mm -hmm. um, more of that work. But one of the biggest things, uh, some of the more <laughs> touchy issues are whether there is going to be a private right of action for for consumers for individuals um that's one of the sticking points the other sticking point is whether uh, the federal law will preempt state law so i'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept of preemption that we have in the u.s so preemption means generally at the federal level that a piece of law, a federal law will, um, you know, supersede any, any uh, state uh, versions. Um, it's not always the case. Uh, there are different levels of preemption. So under HIPAA, HIPAA is the federal law, mm -hmm. um, but it's not complete preemption. So some states like California have a version of HIPAA, but they can't go below the HIPAA standards, the, HIP, the, the federal HIPAA standards has to be the baseline minimum and mm -hmm. the state can go up and, and add to it. But there are other types of preemption where states are prohibited from passing any, any legislation in that area if, if the federal government has already done it. Um, a lot of you know, companies want preemption because they only want to deal with one privacy law and not have to worry about California or Washington or other states. Um, it's similar to what we had, you know, they, they want to prevent that. That's, that's what we had with the data breach laws. We have, I think, 48 or 39 right now, hmm. uh, state data breach laws that companies have to deal with when they get breached. Um, and so that's, that's the second sticking point uh, for companies. Um, the one thing that I am most concerned about personally is that a lot of the proposed bills don't don't extend or don't apply to the government. So unlike the GDPR in Europe, which not not just applies to the the private sector, also applies to the public se sector. Um, I'm concerned that none of the pro proposals that we've seen at the U.S. level apply to government entities, which I think is important because privacy, 
you know, a lot of some of our some of the biggest privacy issues that we have are with 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 public entities. So we're talking about surveillance and and given especially today, given mm -hmm. COVID nineteen and the tracking and that that not just the private sector is doing, but the governments are doing. We want to make sure that our live our our pri privacy rights are are not um, unduly infringed. Um, but yeah, I, I think the conversation shifted a little bit given COVID. And so mm -hmm. I don't know when we're going to really see uh, a federal pri privacy law soon. It, it might be, it might be a couple more years. Like hopefully by the time we get through this mm -hmm. pandemic, we can pick up that work again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So we are in the same situation in now in Japan is we have a lot of the local local rules regarding the data protection. It's over two thousand, which is so big. It's very hard for the company to to make it comprehensive. Uh, they also in the uh, the COVID nineteen this moment is the government is trying to correct in the the personal data. Of course, they said it's anonymities, but we are not sure then actually how they deal with. Um, so I think the this this issue is needs to be the taking the balances in uh, privacy um, data use to 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 protect the all the citizens. So that's that's very um, important insight. So the 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 next question is the like you, you have a your own community is the lives of a privacy tech. So you so have a, any yeah. We started as a small you know, hobby or project that I had last year, I saw, well, not just me, but colleagues and I saw that there are more and more privacy tech companies, which is, uh, which is a positive and encouraging thing. And it's something that I want to, to keep fostering um, and, and help facilitate. And so I, I, I started as small as just uh, supporting these startups online and tweeting them and talking to their founders um, but I saw that uh, you know investors are starting to talk to to privacy experts like uh, my colleagues and me to ask for help about uh, understanding the privacy challenges and the privacy landscape and whether the mm -hmm. startups that they're that they're looking into are solving privacy problems that we we have experienced throughout our careers and mm -hmm. and um, I also, for, based on talking with, with these founders and investors, I also wanted to help these founders and connect them with domain experts and help mm -hmm. connect them to, to these investors. Um, I wanted to do you know, whatever I could to, to uh, evangelize the privacy tech community. And so in the coming days, I will be launching our website and mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that uh, we could bring together these uh, three groups, the privacy tech entrepreneurs and technologists on the one hand, and then the investors who are interested in funding privacy technologies mm -hmm. and the privacy domain experts who can help uh, these uh, startups in, in, in explaining to them what some of our biggest problems are in the privacy community mm -hmm. so that they can help for them. Um, and we will be having a virtual summit in June to bring these people together. And we will have more information about that on the rise of, on riseofprivacytech.com in, in the coming days. Um, it's, it's not quite up yet. I'm, uh, my team of developers are, are working on it. That sounds good. That's a great initiative. Um, I think the privacy tech is the key point in the next decades to be a protective for all the consumers. They're also the brand making, uh, such as the the Apple, the Google, the Facebook, the tech companies are very um, uh, paying attention with the space. A lot of the companies are coming. The startups is also right. doing that. The, we we are one of them. So the okay. last three, uh, please. I just wanted to say, yeah. all, I would. I just wanted to add um, one of the other reasons that I. Mm. I invested in this is because I've, I've seen from years of practicing in Silicon Valley that the law is always lagging behind technology and so mm -hmm. we can't really wait for you know the federal government or or, or the legislators um, across the world to to pass the privacy laws that we need and so 
um, we can solve these problems instead of waiting for the law. We can solve some of these problems through technology, and, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm very much um, invested in in helping out privacy tech startups that are solving real problems uh, in the privacy community. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, Rastri, uh, please uh, give a message to all the listeners uh, who are watching this um, privacy talk. That's that's very great, the message to all the people. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, if you're just any individual, like you could be a business owner, a technologist, or um, a lawyer, or just uh, any other individual who is concerned about their privacy, I, I think we can all do our, our part. Um, we could... Uh, talk to our regulators. We could build if 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 you if you have the skills, you could build privacy technology. Jace, as a consumer, you could um, choose to go with privacy technologies versus the ones that are not very privacy protective. And so everyone has a has their part to play. And and I'm I'm very encouraged that some of the research, for instance, Pew Research. Uh, came out with their with their yearly uh, research on consumer sentiment, and I was I was encouraged to see that this year it was more than half of Americans chose not to use a product or service because of privacy concerns, and that's a, a big bump from from uh, the uh, the numbers from the past few years. I've been tracking privacy sentiment in the United States for years, and so that's a that's quite a big jump, um, and and I think businesses out there who want to uh, set themselves aside and, and who want to compete and, and, and create, use privacy as a competitive advantage um, should pay attention and, and, and look at, you know, the, the trend. It's not just the regulators who are caring, uh, but big companies are also caring to and using privacy as a competitive advantage. Also, consumers are also caring as well and starting to pick products based on privacy. Now, thank you for your last great message. So it's a time to be uh, like collaborative actions regarding the, the new futures. Even the corona has been spreading the worldwide, but we are the times to, uh, to, to, to make the solutions. They, they hand in hand each other. So that, that, that's very great interviews. So thank you for having this time today. Of course, and thank you for having me, Kohei. Take thank care. you. Take care. Bye. Uh, okay.